Dormant like that, yeah, I could, but um, This kind of work? Yeah. Yeah, well, we do this all winter long, basically, uh, um, on all conifers, uh, especially pines, but large junipers, uh, yews, and all of that. Uh, when they're dormant like this, it's the best time to work on these trees. So, yeah, I would recommend it for pretty well everything. Uh, deciduous? Not really. I prune them at this time of year when the leaves change color because that's when the sap is retreating. But then after that, um, I try like Japanese maples. Um, if I wire them during the winter or in the fall, then when they bud out in the spring, uh, they grow so quickly that first flush of growth that in no time the tree has grown into the wire. So I usually wait and defoliate all my vigorous deciduous trees, elms, maples and that, between mid-May and mid-June, and that's when I wire them. That's, that's a loaded question. The question is, when I defoliate, do I leave on all the foliage, or do I partially defoliate? Again, it depends on, uh, on the tree. It depends on the strength of certain sections. Like if I have a weak branch, I won't defoliate it, but the strong branches will be. Or on trident maples, I have some that are old, and the foliage is really, really dense. And um, Zelkova is the same thing. So what happens, all, all the upper foliage shades out the inside, and then you wind up with a tree that's empty inside. So uh, when I defoliate, I'll cut off all the large leaves, on the top and the outside of all the branches and leave all the smaller leaves inside. Okay, so we've got quite a few of the branches pruned back now and we'll be ready to start wiring. Okay, so, so far, how does it look? So, now we're going to start. We're going to start with the lower branches here. This is our, our semi-cascade semi branch. So I will be choosing some copper wire and I, I, we don't, it's flexible enough that we don't need to um, use a raffia to protect it, okay? I like little snags like this, generally what I'll do is I will, um, you know, peel the old bark off of them and whiten them later on with lime sulfur. So we'll just get some wire here. Nobody knows when they're a master. You're a master when you're told you're a master by your peers. <coughs> so nobody, I mean, you would be ridiculed and laughed at if you called yourself a master, okay? So you never, ever. But it's not, it's not a phone call from Japan. <laughs> <laughs> they send you an official plaque yeah. when you reach there, right? Well, I can only say that I've been doing it a long, long, long time. And, uh, you know, it's always given me great pleasure to do bonsai. I, I consider myself very fortunate that, you know, that I was hired to be the curator of the bonsai collection in Montreal because there was no collection when I first started off in bonsai. And so I was at the right place in the right time. And, uh, you know, it, I was there right from the beginning, which makes it... Uh, really interesting for me to have known all the famous bonsai masters like John Naka, Yuji Yoshimura, and all of those people because, I mean, bonsai started mostly, well, in California in the 50s, but mostly in the 60s and 70s. So it was right when I was getting started in bonsai too, okay? What is the aftercare since you're going to win it? Well, <laughs> if, if you know you're going to win it, um, we'll go out and buy some. I, I saw in the news this morning that the lotto ticket 
and nobody won the, this latest lotto. So we'll go out and buy some tickets together, okay? Yeah, yeah. Um, what is the aftercare? Uh, the aftercare. Um, just, as I say, in winter, don't overprotect them. Uh, this one should be repotted in spring. It could even be potted um, into, you know, into this or even its final bonsai pot, I think. But it, as I say, you only know once you get it out of the, the ground. Uh, after that, um, never, never overwater them in spring. In fact, if, it start, if we get, go through a rainy period in spring, cover the soil of the surface with a plastic bag and only water it when it starts to get dry. Otherwise, you get needles that are too long. And then, um, after that, uh, never fertilize it in spring, only in the fall. Because again, it's going to fatten up your needles. And you, you want to avoid that. So, um, they can only be grown in full sun. So if you don't have a sunny backyard, Sell it to somebody else if you win it, okay? Because it just won't... You have a sunny backyard? The perfect spot. The perfect spot, okay. Um, then, then, what else? Uh, all the new growth comes out in spring. And I do uh, bud pinching. Uh, no, we don't have... Um, okay, but the buds come out um, in little bundles like this. And, and the ends start to lengthen and you just get in there and hold them with your fingers and pull them out. And you, you have to do bud pinching until, I always stop between the 1st and 15th of July when, when it's, they stop sending out new buds. But the last pinching, my, my foliage pads get so, so, so dense, so thick that um, what I do is I pull off all the, the larger needles and the needles hanging downwards, okay, so the sun, to let the sun get in, because otherwise, again, the inside starts to uh, lack, lack light. So that's important. Okay, I'll just wire down some of these a little bit more, then we'll go on to the upper part. It's, it's always a little bit long. Okay but I want to get one part. Sometimes I'll do all the major branches and then um, I'll, I'll do uh, this, the fine wiring, but I'm going to try to get as much done as possible. So I just want to bring these down a little bit more. All right. Try not to cross your wires if you can. Um, you were just talking about pulling out some of the needles if they're in the way. I'm doing it now if they're going to be caught underneath, underneath the wire. What kind of pot is that again? Where did you get those? Ah, you know, I'm not from here. Where do I get them? Um, in Montreal, I, I used to order containers of them. Um, but now there's a business that sells Akadama called Go Bonsai that's selling them because they're so popular. And there's another business called Bonsai Art et Culture, Arts and Culture. Uh, and they, they ship, they sell them. Almost everyone sells them in Montreal, and they're called just called Japanese training pots. And something this big might cost you forty or fifty dollars, but the smaller ones are, you know, uh, they, they go by numbers. This is a number twelve. It's Japanese numbers, and uh, this one, uh, but the the eight or the number eights are about this big, and they sell for about. Oh, 18 or 19 dollars. In Japan, almost all of the trees are that are in training, if they're not in the ground, are in this type of, in that type of pot. Okay. Do you get multiple flushes of growth on your larches, uh, David? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The question is, can I get multiple uh, flushes of growth? Yes. Many, as I said. Um, they start flushing out as soon as they come out of the winter protection. Yeah. They're flushing out, um, and and they'll flush out at least three or four times uh, until the beginning, beginning to middle of July, when the, okay. and then they'll stop for the season. 
So yeah, I can get quite a, quite a few growths from them. Uh, they're such a pleasant tree to work with as bonsai because they have they have something for every season. You know, in spring there's that tender new growth that's bright green, and then in the um, in the summer, you know, in the summer they look like a pine tree. They just look very um, green and and lush and beautiful. And then the fall, of course, they turn this color, which is spectacular. And then finally, um, finally in winter they lose all their needles, and you've got that bare infrastructure, which is so pretty. Don't forget that the major the major shows in Japan. Both the Taipan 10 and the Kokofu show in Tokyo um, are. The Taipan 10 is in Kyoto, by the way. But the major shows are all held in the winter. Taipan 10 is late November, and uh, the Kokofu is the end of January, beginning of February. Why? Uh, because you can see the beauty of the tree, the shape of the tree, the infrastructure of the tree, and also. A second more practical reason is the bonsai experts who are so busy in spring and fall, um, in winter they, they can slack off a bit and so they have time to exhibit trees because the bonsai men are businessmen. As I said, often during the kokofu, the trees are sold, the trees in the exhibition, for big amounts of money, especially the winning trees usually go for four time four or five times more than they would ordinarily sell for um, if they win a prize in the Kokofu show. But um, often it's during that show, they, they've taken so many years to get that tree so perfect to put in the Kokofu show that they say it's reached its ultimate beauty. They can no longer basically improve it. So that's the right time to sell it Well, it's at its ultimate. What kind of pot do you think would suit this tree in its final pot or bonsai pot, David? Uh, what kind of pot? Yeah. Something like, uh, something like that, okay. A simple square. Yeah. Um, what color? Excuse me? What color? What color? Uh, this, this is a conifer, and conifers usually do not um, do not go well with glazed pots, with colored pots. So it's basically the absence of color. It's basically unglazed, just an earthenware color. And these go well, very well with either um, pale browns or grays often, because they, they have a lot of dead wood and driftwood on them. So they go very well with, with those colors. Okay, now we're going to start on some of these upper branches. Before I start this one here, uh, it was too long if you remember. Do you remember that? Big, uh, I'm just going to gin that. You know, everybody knows what a gin is. I'm not teaching to the, uh, it's the uninitiated throwing pearls before the swine, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> gin pliers are a little bit different than regular pliers. Uh, gin pliers are made to have a little space in them. So when you grab a branch, there's a flat space. This is a regular plier. Now these, the lo these are masakunis. They come in long and short versions. The long version is if you want to uh, bend a branch. These are made specifically for bending branches. So what you do is you grab the wire on its side, like this, on the side, and then you you bend with your pliers. The short ones are just, whoops. The shorter ones we call um, the wire pliers. It's just for grabbing the wire, for wiring and unwiring. So I'm not saying you need all of these things, but um, there's a practical reason for all of them. Now yesterday, I did a critique of the shows, of the trees in the show, and I was mentioning how some people um, who really understand bonsai, um, what they were doing was creating gins higher up in the tree to, um, 
to knit them in, to um, join them to the gins at the base of the tree. You can't just have gins in one place. A gin, the dead wood or cherries, it symbolizes that tree's struggle for survival. That, you know, a lot of branches or part of the trunk died. And so you don't want to just have it in one place. You want it really that it'll be everywhere throughout the tree uh, to give it a natural appearance. Okay. Now, this is a really ugly ant. When branches break in nature, they don't break as if they're cut off with a fel pair of felco pruners. You don't want that. So, but the trouble is, because it's still so flexible, if I go to break it with this, it's just going to bend like that, okay? So, until it dries, we usually only break them when, they, when, they, um, when they're dried. You just use a pair of knob cutters to make it look pretty temporarily. So here I would just go. So it just looks a little bit better once you take a few nips and tucks out of it, okay? To make it look natural. You can break it and better later on, okay? Okay, so let's get these two branches and then we'll get you in a minute. Okay, Josh? Uh, now, the most important thing is that your wire always be well anchored. You, you cannot do two opposite branches because they will rock back and forth um, so you just have to always be careful to get it right. Okay, I'm going to wire just a few of these. We're almost through it, folks. I keep saying that, and then we're not, but anyway. I've trimmed a lot. I haven't trimmed that much off. A lot of... Um, pretty hard to kill. I mean, sometimes I've, I've pruned off maybe 80 or 90 percent of the foliage of a larch and it hasn't bothered them at all. Uh, not if you do it in the right season. There's always that caveat, you know, if you do it in the right season. Um, a lot of people do things at the wrong time and then the tree will go and die and they'll say, you see, I told you you couldn't water it or I told you uh, wire it or I told you you couldn't do this. And I'm saying, yeah, but you did it at the wrong time. Now, this, for some reason, I think when we were wiring, this little branch here is split halfway. So when you get a split, you use liquid cut paste. You know, it's, um, it comes in all shapes and sizes. Uh, this is sort of orangey colored but you just pour it into the wound. Don't use the hard stuff if it's a little, um, if, if it's a little cracked, you want it to flow in there. So you just... Just pour it in, and then you grab a little piece of wire, and, oh, this is a branch. Here and just make sure that it goes into the crack so air doesn't get in there and it won't dry out, okay? So, and if you, if you do, um, if you do gin large branches, this isn't that large, then you can put um, the harder cut paste all around to stop it from uh, drying back a bit, all right? Hey, I'm going to wire these little ones. This wire's too thick, and that'll be it. 20, it's pretty fine. 20, we, we go up to 22 and 24. 24, 22 and 24 look like Nigel's hair. They're really fine. <laughs> Except I like straight wire. <laughs> Nigel doesn't like wire at all, so it's okay. Okay. And so, uh, yeah. And, and in Japan, they say there's two types of wiring. You, when you're 
training, basically doing bunking out a basic shape of the tree, you're not fine wiring usually. You're wiring all the major branches into place. And um, this finer wire is called show wire. And because when you put a tree in a show, you want all the branches to be perfectly placed, like that one in the corner that won the, mm -hmm. the first prize. You want it all to be perfectly placed, but you don't want it to show. Because the whole point of bonsai is that the tree has to look entirely natural, that it cannot, that it wasn't touched by the hand of man. I mean, it's sort of, you know, we, we yeah, we sort of uh, trick ourselves into thinking or wanting to believe that it wasn't touched by man, fully knowing that it was. So anyway, that's the, you know, weird part about bonsai. But anyway, um, so you do really want to, um, when you're wiring for a show, very fine wiring, and often you have to do it maybe a month or two ahead of time because the wire will blacken. It, it, it sort of corrodes a bit on the tree and then you can't see it at all. But a lot of people wire at the last minute. So um, what we do is we, we take coils of these wire and lower it into a bath of lime sulfur. And the lime sulfur, there's a, a reaction and will turn the wire black, a chemical reaction. But then you have to wipe off the liquid because otherwise it burns the branches on your tree. But the Japanese say there's two types of wiring. One type of wiring is basically um, show wiring, where you, you don't leave spaces and use spine wiring. The other type is training wiring, when you're training the tree, and there you use larger than necessary wire to really hold the branch in place, and, and you can space it out a bit more. It can be a little bit rougher, okay? So don't worry too much about your wiring. Okay, so final touches. We want to um, place the branches in a, a little bit more natural way. So here we go. I'm protecting it from breaking away there. And this is a long straight section. This is totally unacceptable in bonsai. So, now we build up our foliage planes. The, the branch parallels the main branch and then reaches out for the light. And we have to build foliage planes above to pad the top of our branch. I don't like overly large foliage pads, so I try to bring them in also. This is a back branch. Any front or back branch should not be dropped too low because they're there just to provide um, 
a backdrop so that your eye isn't lost when it looks through the other branches. So it should be flat. Here we've got a double branch here. Um, and sometimes it fattens up too much. So I might remove some of it. Okay, let's look and see what we've got going on here, guys. Okay, so now we see the curves, curve here, curve here, curve here, curve here. Keep the harmony going. Keep the movement going in your bone side. Look always, without being repetitive, always look for um, the basic movement when it comes out of the ground and then continue that movement right up to your, your top, okay? And uh, it, it, it will be planted at this angle. Let me bring this. If I, just let me tie it down. What you want to do often, you can tie down a branch just slightly. We don't want to bring this branch down too low because as I said, I wanted, I want to make a, um, a semi-cascade out of it. I don't want to have um, a full cascade. So what happens? It has to be, it has to land up just above the rim of the pot. Okay, so um, there are a few places, like this branch is a bit bare, but it will, it will um, butt out. Um, and here, well, we just don't have a lot of foliage, but it'll all fill out in the spring. And, but that is the basic shape of the tree. I could probably even take, mm, I don't know if I could right now, uh, but well, let's leave in that wedge there. But that's the final result, folks. And um, I hope you enjoy it. And I hope it resembles the very rough sketch I did in the beginning, all right? Okay, so. Again, Andrea and you other ladies that said there's not much work. It's, um, it's, it's like pre-trained and no. We can, in bonsai, we can always improve our trees. We're always seeking to um, make a better bonsai. Uh, the only finished bonsai is a dead bonsai. Um, so you have to keep working on them and creating beauty out of nature. And, you know, I mean, as I say, bonsai is nature perfected. We're looking at the tree and saying, how can we make this even more beautiful? And that's what I try to do today. Um, and that's what you should be doing with your bonsai. There's so many bonsai here that I said, oh boy, you know, just a little bit more work and it would be so much, a so much better tree. So that's really important. Dare, dare to, to go, go further and further with your bonsai. That's so important. Okay, well, thank you very much. Enjoy your